Hey there, Sharon Hornell from here. Welcome to day 227 of our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. We are focusing on communication goals this month, and today's topic is different styles of communication. And we're just going to talk about six different styles, and then tomorrow we're going to hop into Myers Briggs and the DISC analysis, tools like that, that help us to understand our communication style better, as well as other people's communication style, and how we can be aware, be more self-aware of our style and make changes as are appropriate to the people that we're communicating with or the group of people that we're communicating with. So today we're talking about a couple of different things. We're going to talk about open communication, closed communication styles, formal and informal, fixed and flexible. Those are just some categories of communication and styles that you can have with respect to communication. And all we're going to do is become a little more self-aware today because it's going to lead us into doing and we may if you have never done a Myers Brager a disc analysis before we're probably gonna I'll, I'll give you a link to a free tool and you can do it and it's fun to do every once in a while even if you've done it before I've been doing it since my dad first brought Myers Briggs home from 3M when he was a corporate executive at 3M and he shared it with our family and we learned our different communication styles within our family and that was when I was in probably high school so high school maybe early college but I think I was in high school still <laughs> That was my first exposure to it and I've always it's really interesting I, every time I do it with the exception of one I come out as the same four letter category or the same type personality because that's core and inherent to who I am and so we'll talk about that tomorrow but today we're gonna talk about open and closed communication and we're just gonna grade ourselves and say where am I with respect to open or closed communication open communication of course well let's do closed first closed means Hey, it's my way or the highway. <clears throat> I'm going to talk at you, not necessarily listen, but uh, we see this a lot in corporate America where the upper uh, management people talk down literally to the rest of the people in the organization and not a whole lot of information flows up in that organization because they have pretty much a closed way of communicating. Hey, we're going to tell you what we want and what to do and we don't really care what you think about it. We're just going to tell you. Open communication, on the other hand, is two-way communication where so close is usually one way open is uh, <clears throat> flexible but in which we're gonna talk about in a minute but open means there's different possibilities in different ways it's like having an open door policy versus a closed door policy we all had teachers and bosses over the course of our lives and careers that you were able to go ask them questions they wanted to help you you were able to uh, pop in and engage with them or communicate with them during, at least during their office hours, right? Or when their door was open. When their door was closed, it meant they were busy and working and they would prefer to not be interrupted unless, of course, it was an emergency and they can always knock on the door. So, <clears throat> to me, whether you use open or closed communication as a person and is it part of your style, basically it depends on your past experiences and the ex situation. That's why I say it depends, because sometimes I'm super open in my communication, pretty much always had an open door policy in all of my corporate jobs, but have worked with people that don't. We're all different types of people, right? Some of us need quiet time to get work done, and we struggle when we're interrupted. I used to actually go to work a couple hours earlier than anybody else, and I'd usually stay a couple hours later, because that couple, especially the couple hours earlier when my kids were little, uh, it made it possible for me to get more done in that two hours before everybody else came into work than the whole rest of the day when I usually had to leave to meet the bus or my kids would get into lots of mischief. So open and closed communication. Open communication increases trust. It helps us to build relationships. And it helps to build confidence in other people, right? When we're there for them, it increases transparency, things like that. Feedback teamwork it, it helps teamwork close communication does not help teamwork very well it doesn't make people want to be giving their best to the organization etc close communication safeguards confidences and I don't know if you ever worked in corporate America but corporate America has lots of secrets and lots of things they think they need to keep confident because they don't want anybody else to know about them normally the competition but they don't even tell their own people because they're afraid the competition is going to find out which is indicative of the culture and the way they treat the people that work there uh, formal and informal communication formal communication is communication that has guidelines and rules around it think of writing term papers in school 
there are guidelines and rules that you have to follow or you lose points and you lose get a worse grade when you're writing that term paper the same applies to business cover letters resumes <coughs> would be considered business plans formal types of communication and so you want to follow the expected rules and guidelines in order to communicate in those ways now there are creative ways to add your personality to those things but you have to do them within the guidelines or people lose respect for you it protects uh, confidential information it maintains a clear hierarchy which is important in some organizations to their culture as they want you to know where you stand in the organizational chart uh, informal communication of course builds rapport trust uh, it creates a more relaxed atmosphere, a more, a more growth-oriented, personal development, positive atmosphere, in my experience, but everybody's experience is different. Um, and then flexible versus fixed. Again, fixed is a lot like formal, right? This is the way we do it. These are the formal reports or the fixed reports that we create every month for our business, for our, our organization. And I am a big believer that it's important to have things just like goals that we look at on a regular basis, usually monthly for sure, to know if we're moving and making progress for that or not. Key performance indicators in corporate America are an example of, of a fixed, for the most part, number or guidepost that we're looking at, just like our goals are for our personal lives and for our business lives, that we're looking at to make sure that we're making progress and moving toward the thing that we want. They're consistent, people know what to expect. They know that every month I'm gonna do a monthly report. Every week I'm gonna do a weekly report. Every day, I'm going to check in and figure out what I was grateful for today, things like that. And then um, flexible means you tailor the message to the situation. You tailor the message and the communication to the group that you're talking to or the person that you're talking to, etc. cetera. Uh, it builds, again, more trust and rapport with people because they know that you're communicating directly with them. It's not just a mass uh piece of communication that everybody's getting. A press release would be an example of a formal and usually fixed type of communication. Different publications, formal publications, books, right? Books follow, for the most part, uh, depending on the genre that they're written for, an expected format, with the exception of children's books. Children's books are awesome nowadays. So, are you more open or closed? Are you more formal or informal in your communication? Are you more fixed or flexible in your communication? Nothing is better or worse than the other. It depends on the situation. And it depends on the results we're getting from our communication. If we're getting the results that we want and we're achieving our goals, then our communication style is probably appropriate for us. So just do a little self-awareness check and a little evaluation today and ask yourself, this is my communication style and I'm okay with it or this is my communication style and I'd like to tweak it in a couple of areas. Or in this situation, I could see being a little more formal in my communication. Feedback is an example of that. I'm giving people feedback in a business or work environment. Some corporations, most corporations have their process and their procedure for doing that. But you can still take that process and procedure and make it your own. I did that in all of my jobs because I found the way feedback was given in, in the vast majority of the organizations, at least all the ones I worked in, uh, it wasn't very positive or it didn't really get us the results we want because it was focused on the negative instead of the positive. So I just took that and flipped it around in a bunch of different ways. We can talk about it another day. All right, so that's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Myers-Briggs Disc Analysis, understanding our own personality. And so it might be a little bit longer homework if you've never done that, uh, but it doesn't take that long and it's really fun and it's important to get to know more about ourselves. All right, any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.